another refusal from President and Mrs. Van Buren. Here's my list for my lawn tea on Saturday. Don't cross off the President's name. I'll try them once more. Good afternoon, Mrs. Falkins. Good afternoon. Don't bother to announce me, Thomas. That'll be all for now. We'll finish our correspondence later. Constance, how nice to see you. <laughs> dear Beatrice, do sit down. Oh, I can't, dear. I've only a moment. Oh, that is a new gown, isn't it? You've seen it three times before. Really? <laughs> well, you've always had the knack of making the oldest gown seem new. Oh, my dear, I couldn't resist dropping by to tell you the news. News? Something that I haven't heard? Well, if that's possible. Dolly Madison has come back to Washington to live. You don't tell me. And President Van Buren has already paid his respects to her. Where is Dolly going to live? <laughs> well, naturally, in the house President Madison left her. And I dare say Dolly's place will be the social center again. As it was when she was the first lady. She must be over 60. Oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> well, I must be running along. I'm so glad I was the first one to bring you the news. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. must allow himself the discretion of candor. <laughs> Washington has missed you, Dolly, and I hope you've missed us. You are always a diplomat, Elisha. <laughs> Would you excuse me, Elisha? B, I'm so delighted. Charles, how nice to see you. The pleasure is ours, darling. Would you like to leave your wrap in the off salon, Beatrice? Would you excuse us, Charles? Certainly. B, I'm so glad you came. I could hardly have refused. Might have caused talk. Well, the invitation wasn't sent for a refusal. Just an afterthought, I suppose. Oh, not at all. I sent out all the invitations this morning. I, I planned the party on the spur of the moment. I think things usually work out better that way. Do you, darling? B, I'd like to be your friend. Thank you. Very well. When James asked me if I thought Charles would make a good ambassador... You told him no. Yes. And he listened to you. He was the president, but he listened to you, his wife. Not to his advisors or his cabinet, but to you. Do you know what you did when you advised him against Charles? You made me the laughing stock of Washington. Beatrice, do you hate me because of Charles or yourself. Were you ambitious for him or yourself? I think our guests will be wondering about you. Madame. Yes, Louise? The post has come. If I were you, ma'am, I wouldn't read another letter from him. Burn it. That wouldn't help much now, would it? Have we any money in the house? It isn't for me to say, Mrs. Madison, but you've done everything in your power. Four long years, living in hiding. Louise. What will you do when you're entirely out of money? I hope it never comes to that. Crane, that's the shop I want. Stop there.
I'll just be a moment. Thank you. Strange. You wait here, Crane. to see Dolly's housemaid going into the loan shop. And then I made some discreet inquiries and found out that she has sold many other things, including several paintings through a commissioner in Boston. I hope you haven't told anyone else about this. Not yet. Well, don't. This is going to be my little coup d'etat. <laughs> well, I must be going. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Yes, madam. Thomas, are you acquainted with any of the servants in the Madison house? Uh, well, uh, I... Uh, Speak up, Thomas. Uh, well, madam, uh, there's the maid. Uh, I've talked to her on occasion. No others? I know Jamie. Uh, he's a man of all work. Uh, tell him I'd like to see him about doing some work for me. Yes, madam. Now, tell me what you found out. Well, ma'am, you're right. There's something going on. What with that woman Louise sneaking out and Mrs. Madison crying to break her heart. What about those letters she receives? Every time she gets one, Mum, she sends Louise out with something to sell. Does she answer those letters? Aye, Mum, she does. And puts money in them. Well, thank you, Mum. Jamie. Do you know to whom she sends those letters? Aye. Well? Well, now, Mum, that's another bit of work I've done. I asked Louise, could I post one for her? And she let me. That's how I got the address. It's right there complete. Name and address. A man's name. Now. How good of you to come, Elisha. What can I do for you, Dolly? And whatever it is, I'll move heaven and earth to get it done. <laughs> Please sit down. Elisha, uh, for years I've been keeping James's papers, his letters, notes, and diaries. Of course, I envy you having them, Dolly. I um, believe they belong in the National Archives. But they're so very dear to you. You always said you'd never part with them. Well, I've thought it over, and I've decided it would be selfish to keep them. Something's troubling you, Dolly. Please, whatever it is, it won't go beyond these walls. I'd simply like to offer James's papers for sale. He wrote some wonderful things, Elisha. He was a great man and a great president. When he died, the only thing that kept me going was his letters. I read them and I reread them. Everything, Elisha. Even his notes scribbled on the margins of his copybooks. It made me feel as though he was still alive. Dolly is an old friend I... Well, oh, confounded, I don't have to beat about the bush with you. You wouldn't sell the Madison papers unless you needed money. Now, if that's the case, I demand that you let me help you. You're very kind, Elisha, but you've misunderstood. Fiddlesticks, I've watched you, Dolly, these last months. You're not your old self. But I'm almost 70. I'm afraid that's too old to change. Dolly, what is it? What are you hiding? Nothing. Nothing I can't handle myself. You're a very dear and loyal friend, Elisha. But why won't you let me prove it? 
because you don't have to. for mysteries. Uh, who are you? Why did you come here? I came from Washington to see you. My name is Beatrice Trent. The name means nothing, madam. Would a position, a well-paying position, mean something? My husband is Congressman Charles Trent. He heard of your plight and would like to do something for you. Why? Let us just say because of a mutual friend. What is this position? But at the start, it would be some minor duty in the diplomatic department in uh, France or England. Well, of course, the idea of traveling abroad intrigues me, madam. But I am carefully watched by my creditors, some of whom are eager to see me in debtor's prison. Just what are your obligations? I hardly think that's any of your business. Unless, of course, the congressman is interested in advancing me enough to pay my debts. I believe he is. Whom do you owe? Oh, they're mostly gambling debts. I owe several months' rent in the green grocer. Consider them paid. There's also a bill to the tavern keeper. I will advance you enough to pay your current debts and your fare to Washington, where you will meet with Mr. Trent. Madam, I humbly apologize for my ill-chosen impertinence. Mr. Trent will meet you at this address in Washington tomorrow. I shall be there, madam. Goodbye. I am indeed grateful to you, Mrs. Trent. Mm -hmm. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Where is Mr. Trent? Well, he was unavoidably detained at his office, but he'll meet you at our home this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Here is the address. That will be fine. Have you been drinking? Yes, ma'am, last night. But I'll be all right by this afternoon. Well, uh, perhaps you need something to steady your nerves, hmm? Barky. Yes, ma'am? See that Mr. Todd gets whatever he desires. Yes, ma'am. And you'll see that he arrives at my home this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Oh, yes, ma'am. I have the address. What'll it be, mister? Show Mrs. Madison in, Thomas. Dolly Madison, come in here. For goodness sake, B. Oh, don't look so shocked, my dears. I decided it was high time that Dolly and I forgot our petty differences. Uh. Yeah, I'm delighted to see you. B, I couldn't be happier. Do sit down. Thank you. Good afternoon. How nice to see all of you. May I pour your tea? Thank you. Hello, darling. It's been a long time. Mrs. Parkins, you're looking very well, Mrs. Madison. Oh, very kind. Ladies, I do hope you all like surprises. Surprise? What is it, be? You'll see. I think you'll be especially surprised, Dolly. Well, I'll try to be. You know it's my age. I don't think you'll need to try. Madam, there's a man that... Uh... Show the gentleman in, Thomas. I went to a great deal of trouble and expense. I do hope neither will be wasted. Your ingenuity is I most effective, Beatrice. I'm sure it won't be. Thank you, my good man. I can stand on my feet. Good afternoon, ladies. I 
didn't mean to intrude. Well, here you are, Mrs. Trent. Didn't know you were entertaining. Hey. Hey, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would like to present my son. Son. As you know, my, my first husband, Mr. Todd, died. And this is our son. He's been away and, and ill. I've, I've missed you, Payne. I'm, I'm so glad you've come home to me. Beatrice, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Now, if you will excuse me. Thank you. I must be leaving. Well, your clever surprise didn't have quite the desired effect, did it, Beatrice? I must say Dolly was magnificent. I wonder how you or I, or any one of us, would have carried it off. <laughs> Imagine a son like that. I had no idea. Was it a great deal of trouble finding him? Constance, I'm asking you to leave. Certainly, dear. <laughs> Goodbye, Beatrice. Thank you for a most interesting afternoon. <gasps> really, Charles, couldn't this have waited till morning? It's after ten o'clock. You had your little triumph this afternoon, didn't you, Beatrice? A triumph? What are you talking about? But all of Washington is talking about Payne Todd, Dolly's son. Oh, that. Quite a spectacle, wasn't it? The always impeccable, always charming Dolly Madison with a robe. Beatrice, you've tried to disgrace one of the finest women I've ever known. You're a fine one to defend her. She ruined your career, didn't she? No, you did, with your bitterness and jealousy. Charles. James Madison refused me an appointment as ambassador. At her insistence. It was simply that I wasn't good enough for the job and he knew it. Why are you suddenly defending that woman? She needs no defense. I'm your wife, Charles. My wife, alas. What do you mean by that? As my wife, you'd have been the wife of an ambassador, not the wife of Charles Trent. When I lost that appointment, it was your ambition that was shattered. I'm not going to listen to you, Charles. Dolly Madison is preparing to leave Washington. That's exactly what I have in mind. Beatrice. I'm going to do everything in my power to help her stay here. Hey. Mother. I've been sorry a thousand times, haven't I? I don't blame you, son. It was all my fault. I was wrong in trying to hide you all these years. Avoiding my responsibility by merely sending money. You should have let me get what I deserved. Go to a debtor's prison, or worse. Oh, Payne, look at me. I didn't do it for you. I did it for a memory. The memory of a great president. I would have willingly died rather than let any breath of scandal touch his name. But I know now that great men are not measured by their imperfections, but by their deeds. Mother, I lived in the shadow of this great man, who was more than I could ever hope to be. Everywhere I turned in this house, it was James Madison, and I was his stepson. That's why I left. That's why I became... Truth comes too late, doesn't it? What will you do, Mother? What I should have done years ago. Acknowledge my son. Good afternoon, Dolly. Elisha, may I introduce my son, Payne Todd? This is Senator Corey. I'm honored, young man. Thank you, sir. Better unpack, Dolly. You're not going anywhere. I'm afraid I am. Haven't you heard? Heard what? 
Congress has appropriated $25,000 for the purchase of James Madison's papers. Well, I'm afraid that won't alter my plans, but... Oh, Elisha, thank you very much. Not me, Dolly. It was Charles Trent. Charles Trent? He was very eloquent. He's the one responsible for the bill being passed. I want to thank him personally. There's something else. Will you see Beatrice Trent? She's waiting outside. Of course, Elisha. Have her come in. Hey, wait. Why? Dolly, I... I had some words to say. Beatrice. Most of us are capable of hating for very different reasons. But all of us are capable of forgiving. Now, we're going to have tea. Payne, will you find Mrs. Trent a chair? If you can. And tomorrow, Payne and I will unpack. <laughs> 